Luke 9 and 27. But I tell you of a truth, there'll be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the kingdom of the Most High. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rechakwadash, dub honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to all you out came out there pushing his word with all truth and sincerity, and to all you believers out there who believe in on the gospel. It's the brother Kwara Abad from the GMS Houston camp. I just want to go into a lesson. <clears throat> As the, um, the scripture just said, you know, it's literally some of us today who listening to these lessons, uh, some of us today who going out on the highways and hedges, you see, putting comments on brothers' videos, liking the videos, so on and so forth, and the whole believing in Yahweh by Hashim Yahweh Shai and the gospel, right? What I want to touch on this lesson is that us who's in the truth, which we don't know who's of the elect, but we strive to be at that number, but some of us will literally never die again, man. You see, literally never die or die again. And why I say again? Because we know that reincarnation is within the scriptures. Reincarnation is within the Bible, man. Right? We all have been reincarnated. We came back in uh, previous lives, you know, different names, different, different looks, you see, but the same spirit, you know, and we have, of course, if we're here today, we had to die in our past lives, you know, right? Matter of fact, let me grab a quick scripture. Let me grab a real quick one. This is um, Hebrews 9 and 27. Straight to the point, it says, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment, right? So you see, in every reincarnation that you come in, of course, you get to the end of your road and you die. But this is the beautiful part about this, what we talking about. Right? In this last reincarnation, it ain't it ain't no for sure that you just gonna die. Cause the Lord said it'd be something that's not gonna die, man. And how is that possible? Right? The question is, how would you never die again? You see? Well, the answer is if you are the elect of the nation of Israel, as the scripture said, those are the ones who will be saved at the Lord's second coming. Right? So when the Lord make his appearance at his second coming, if you are the elected the nation of Israel, wherever you stay at, because Israel is scattered to the four corners, whether you're in America or Australia, Bahamas, Jamaica, so on and so forth, whoever you is, and if you are alive and are the elect and you see the Lord coming, however old you is right now, 25, 33, 20, 40, 45, 50, however old you is, and if you are the elect and you see the Lord come back, Right? You literally going to get beamed up from wherever you at on earth into a so-called UFO as the world called the day UFOs. But in the scriptures, they are identified as the chariots of Israel. You will get beamed up into a so-called UFO and your spirit will go into the heavenly body. Man, your body going to be changed. And within those heavenly bodies that the nation of Israel going to receive is the law that your commandments put within us. So we ain't going to sin no more. And what the scripture says, the wages of sin is death. So if we ain't go sin no more, guess what? We ain't go die no more. But think about that, man. Whoever you is, say you are you 25 right now, you believe in your how about Shemal Shah, believe in the truth. When the Lord come back, you still alive. You look up and see the Lord from you being 25 years old, the Lord gonna beam you up. And from 25 years old, you literally never gonna taste of death ever for eternity. Think about that. How old you is? 40. Eternity, you ain't go up and taste of death again. The perfect example is Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai died at 33 years old. The Lord is still alive and alive and well, 2,000 some years later, sitting on the right hand side of the Father. He still go come back as a young man. Why? Because he will not ever taste of death again, man. And the same thing for the elect who alive at the coming of the Lord, you will never taste of death, literally, bro. You see, now some people who are the elect who it's already said in their story that they're going to have to be martyrs, that they, they will have to be, you know, put to death for the Lord's sake, man. But that's their story. But we talking about the ones who not going to die, you see, because even even the ones who do die, they're going to be raised up out of their graves, man. <laughs> right. Coming hey, beamed up first by the Lord. But say if you alive, bro, you will be beamed up from being alive <laughs> And literally going to be alive forevermore. Never taste of death in this last reincarnation. Think about that, man. 
Think about that. Because even the ones who do die, yeah, they, they had to die on this side, but they go get beamed up and live forever. No, the ones who are alive at the coming of the Lord, you go be beamed up alive and live forever. You ain't going to die after that, bro. That's just... That's heavy. That I was, you know, meditating on the other day, and it blew my mind. That's why I want to go into a lesson on this, man. This is something to look forward to. This is something to look forward to, like the world. You you strive to be a legend because they say legends live on. Well, no. Michael Jackson, he was so-called a legend, he, he ain't here today. People just talk about him, and that's if they talk about him. No, we talking about true legendary status. You literally living on forever, man. Matter of fact, let's get this. I'm rambling too much. Let's get into the scriptures. This is um Matthew... This is Yahweh speaking, Matthew 16 and 27. It says, For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father. Talking about the Lord's second coming. It says, With his angels, and then shall he reward every man according to his work. Verily I say unto you, There be some standing here, right? <laughs> some standing here who listening to this lesson, right? Those of you who, you know, Listen to the to the apostles and elders and brothers and some of you who stand in here who believe on Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, right? So at the coming of Yahweh Shai, some of us it says, Verily I say unto you, there'll be some of you standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. So it's literally some of us today who the Lord was talking to, man. Some of us today the Lord was talking to. You know, that's not going to taste the death that, but we're going to see him coming. We're going to see him coming, man. Right. Let's let, let me grab this because whatever you're going through. And if you are those ones who chosen to not taste of death, you're going to get through everything that's about to happen in the world, man. You're going to get through Jacob's trouble. You're going to get through the famines. You're going to get through the the uh, the silver uh, uh, war, the uprising, the revolts. You're going to get through that, man. You're going to get through the concentration camps and jail and persecution and tribulation. Also, you could build that number to see how I come back and to never die, but to be beamed up and changed, man, and to live forevermore. <laughs> come on. a hey, matter of fact, before I get that, what I was about to get in second measures, I want to get uh John. John real quick, because before Yahweh Shai left his last time speaking to the disciples, he said something to Peter about John, right? About John. Speaking about death. Speaking about death. Let's let's read it real quick. Right? And, uh, and like I mentioned, this is Yahweh Shai, you know, pretty much last time, you know, after he was risen, showing himself to his disciples. Let me get that real quick. This is John 21 and 14. It says. This is now the third time that Yahweh Shai showed himself to his disciples after that he was risen from the dead. You see, so this is the third time Yahweh Shai showed himself, man. He already was crucified and put to death, and he rose. You see, now let's just read on. Let's just read on. I don't want to jump the gun. I don't want to jump the gun. Let's go to verse 18. This is Yahweh Shai speaking to Peter, right? It says, verse 18 Verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou was young, thou girdest thyself, and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. So he was telling Peter, you know, how it's going to be when he get older. And it says, this spake he signifying what death he should glorify the most high. Telling Peter, look, man, you're doing what you're doing right now. But when you get older, this is how you're going to have to go out, bro. You know, this is how it's going to be. Right, and it says, uh, verse 19. And when he had spoken this, he said unto him, Follow me. So, Yahweh said after he told Peter that he looked at Peter and said, Peter, come on, now you follow me. Verse 20. Then Peter turned about, see of the disciple whom Yahweh Shai loved, talking about John. So, Peter, you know, after Yahweh Shai said, Follow me, they walking a little bit. Peter looked back. <laughs> And see John following him. <laughs> you feel me? It says, seeing a disciple whom Yahweh Shai loved, following, which also leaned on his breast at supper and said, Lord, which is he that betrayed thee? And that's what John said. Verse 21. Then Peter, seeing him, said to Yahweh Shai, Lord, what shall this man do? Because remember, Yahweh Shai told Peter, Peter, you follow me. So as Peter walking with the Lord, Peter turned back. And see John, so he was like, Lord, what you want John to do? You told me follow you, but what you want John to do? Now watch what the Lord say. 
Verse 22, and Yahweh Shai said unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. Now, I want to stop here because I want to get these this same verse in another translation. Because in, in the NIV version, it said a little more plainer so you can understand what the Lord was saying. Right? So I'm going to read it in the NIV version. So this is John 21 and 21. When Peter saw him, he asked, Lord, what about him? Right? Lord, what about John? Verse 22. Yahweh Shai answered, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? You must follow me. Now, a point I want to make again. This was Yahweh Shai third time after he rose already seeing the disciples. The Lord wasn't just coming back. You feel me? Whenever like, oh, what's up, y'all boys? Y'all good? Just popping up on the scene every now and then just chilling with the disciples day in and day out. No. The Lord, he came to him. He told him what it is. And the Lord been in the heavens on the right hand side of the Father. He wasn't just, you know, back and forth chilling and drinking and eating. No. When Shai told him this, he understood. I'm about to go to the heavens. The next time I'm going to see y'all is my second coming. How we know that? Matthew 24. What the disciples said, Lord, what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? So the end of the world is simultaneous with what? The Lord coming. And he gave the disciples things to look for. You see? To know when he was going to come back. So the Lord knew next time I'm going to see my, my men, my disciples, is going to be at my coming. Right? Now let's read this again. Since Yahweh Shah was understanding, next time I'm going to see y'all, when I do return, it's going to be at my second coming, which we still wait on today. Let's read it again. Yahweh Shah answered, if I want him to remain, it's like it is John 21 and 22. This is what Yahweh Shah told Peter about John. He said, now, Yahweh Shah answered, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? You must follow me. Because of this, the rumor spread abroad among the disciples that this disciple would not die. But Shai did not say that he would not die. He only said, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? Now, going back to the point we just made, it didn't say, Shai didn't say to Peter, John ain't going to die. He going to be alive till I return. But just the point. The Lord won't go return to them until his second coming, which we still waiting on. Now, we know it's not no 2,000-something-year-old man named John today who was with Yahweh Shai. No. What is that talking about? His reincarnation. Because remember, Revelation 10, it, it was told to John, this same John, that he was going to prophesy again against many countries and kingdoms and, and nations. You see? Now, John was an old man on the Isle of Patmos. It's not written in history nowhere that John, being an old man, went out to prophesy again. When is he prophesying again? Right now when the end of his last reincarnation. And this is when he going to see the Lord, man. Just like Job. Job said, Job said, I know I'm going to see my Redeemer. You right? <laughs> you see? But point is, John in his last reincarnation, he might still be alive to see the Lord. Whoever he is today, he going to see the Lord. And again, Yahweh Shai said, if I want him to remain alive until I return, the Lord ain't returned back then. Again, and see John, see, and see, Yahweh Shai came and said, see, I told y'all, John was still going to be here when I came back to y'all, but what's up? No, the Lord coming back his second coming and John still might be alive, right? Because the Lord said, what is that to you? It ain't none of our business, so let's move on. <laughs> this second measure's six, right? To further go into that, man. Second measure six. It's a lot here for the rambling, but the second measure six, and I'm going to start at 23, right? Because as I mentioned earlier, if you if you set to be still alive, when the Lord coming to, beam, to be beamed up, being at elect and alive, you're going to get through everything that the world... It's about to go through, man. The tribulation, the mark of the beast. You see the hour of temptation, so on and so forth. Let's read it. Second Ezra 6 and 23. And the trumpet shall give a sound, which when every man heareth, they shall suddenly be afraid. At that time shall friends fight one against another like enemies. Like it's saying, Second Ezra 16, for the lack of bread, people go be running into houses. 
you know, uh, taking everybody goods. It's going to be an up, a, a uprise, a rebellion against the government, right? It says, and the earth shall stand in fear with those that dwell therein, and the springs of the fountain shall stand still, and in three hours they shall not run. Verse 25, listen to this. And whosoever remaineth from all these that I have told thee. So if you then got through all these things that we about to go through, that brothers explain about what's going to happen in Jacob's trouble, newly created creatures. And you feel me? Esau coming down, his troops with great wrath because he know he got but a short time, famine, so on and so forth. If you remain through all these things, it says, whosoever remaineth from all these that I have told thee shall escape. And see my salvation at the end of the world. And that's what we're just talking about. When you have a shot coming back at the end of the world, that's he that's when he returning. So if you get through these things and you alive and to see the Lord, well, you're gonna be alive because you didn't got through everything. So once you get to the end, it says, and shall escape and see my salvation at the end of the world, and the men that are received shall see it, the elect. Who have not tasted death from their birth, man. Check that out, bro. <laughs> you see? Who have not tasted death from their birth. Let's read it again. Whosoever remaineth from all these things that I have told thee shall escape and see my salvation. And the end of the world, the end of Esau world. And the men that are received shall see it who have not tasted death from their birth. Come on, man. This last reincarnation. Yeah, you know, we didn't die before. Like it's, we started off with the scripture. It's appointed unto man once to die. But in his last reincarnation, you might have been born in 1990, 1980, 1995, 2000, whenever you was born. This last reincarnation, if you like John, you see and set to remain to see the Lord coming. Guess what? You ain't going to die. You was born 1990 in America. And from then, from the Lord coming at the end of America, you're going to live forever, man. You see that? It says, and the men that receive, that are received shall see it who have not tasted death from their birth. And the heart of the inhabitants shall be changed and turned into another meaning. You see? So this is something we're looking forward to, man. Lord willing, we are that number. You see? Regardless of if we have to die and get beamed up or if we are alive to get beamed up, Lord willing, we are that number, period, man. But something to look forward to is us not dying again, man. In the whole, in the whole, us not dying again. Because this was a lesson to speak on the ones who was going to be alive. But fuck it. We trying to, hey, whether you die or whether you alive, man, you still going to live forever as an Israelite, man. You see? Now, the two-thirds are going to have to die on this side a horrific death and be brought back, right? But the elect, you're going you're gonna to die glorious deaths if you have to be a martyr. And if not, you're going to see the Lord and meet the ones. Let's get that. Let's get that. That's a spirit. If you alive, you going you going to be beamed up and, and man, let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. This is uh First Thessalonians, right? This First Thessalonians four, and I'm gonna start at thirteen. It says, "But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, right? Concerning the ones who in this truth and had to die in this truth, man. You see." So we talking about the ones who die in the truth. It says, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Yahweh died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Yahweh will the Most High bring with him. You see, Yahweh died and rose. So our brethren, or our sisters, or the believers who, who died believing on Yahweh if Yahweh died and rose again, guess what? They can die and rise again too. This is what we're speaking about. It says, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive, there you go, we which are alive, you see, we which are alive and remain, and we were just talking about the ones who remain in second edges, right? Through all the troubles, and we're going to do what? See the salvation and never die. Well, right here it's saying the same thing. It says, for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, 
with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of the most high, and the dead in Mashiach shall rise first. So the ones who died, believing in the Lord, they're going to rise first. But this is the thing. It said to us who are alive and remain. Right? So the, the ones who died in the truth, they're going to be beamed up first. And it says, then we which are alive, right? Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, come for one another with these words, man. You see? So whether you die in the truth, you will be beamed up in the so-called UFO first by Yahweh Shai, man. And then the ones who are alive and remain, we will be beamed up after that. The point is... <laughs> Bro, think about that. You alive and remain. man, you see in the law, you get beamed up out your body into a whole new body. Never taste death ever, ever. And again, again, yeah, you might have tasted in your past lives, but you don't remember it. Remember, we, we don't have remembrance of former things. You don't remember how you died in your past life. But guess what? If you were the elect and you alive and remain at the coming of your Hawashai, you literally never tasted a death. You don't even know what death feel like. Think about that. Come on, man. You don't even know what death feel like. But you was beamed up, man. Alive, man. At the coming of the Lord, man. Never taste death. Think about that. Hey, like your Hawashai told Peter, what is it to you if this man remain here until I come? Come on, man. Let's man. Ooh, let's get this. Let's get this. What your Hawashai told uh, I think it was Martha. Martha, um, Lazarus' sister, right? After Lazarus. Yeah, Martha. Let's see. John 11. This John 11 and 21. Then said Martha unto Yahweh Shai, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of the Most High, the Most High give it thee. Yahweh Shai said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. And Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day, which we just read, right? The ones who died, they're going to be beamed up and rise again when the Lord come back in the end, at the last, right? But Yahawashai said it to her. <laughs> he said, Yahawashai said it to her. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, Yet shall he live, right? You're going to die. But as Yahawashah died and rose, if you die, you're going to die die and rise again too. This is the point. And whosoever liveth, right? Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? You believe that? <laughs> right? The ones who listen to this message, you believe that shit to myself. First and foremost, before I even ask y'all, do I believe that? Right? This is something to believe. Do you believe... Yo, you yourself right now, you know who you is, right? However old you is, man, woman, you right? You believe on your Hawa Bashim Shai. Do you believe in yourself when your Hawa Shai come, you'll get beamed up and never die again, ever? Never die again. After a billion years, you still young and alive. Come on, man. Let's read that again. Verse 25, John 11 and 25. Your Hawa Shai said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me. Though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this, man? <laughs> Come on, man. Right? But let's get that transformation. Let's get that change. Because the change going to come. <laughs> like, a, like a song, right? A change going to come, man. And when that change come, death going to be put away with. Because we're going to have them new bodies. Let's read it. 1 Corinthians 15 and 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of the Most High. Neither do of corruption inherit incorruption, right? You ain't about to get beamed up and live forever in the same little body. You in same tattoos and, you know, same marks on your body, same height, you know, same weight, you know, ugly. <laughs> you feel me? We ain't about to get beamed up in these bodies, man. These bodies that's full of sin. You feel me? The chains of dogs, we not about to get beamed up in this, but it says, verse 51, but behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, right? Everybody who had elect ain't gonna die. It says, but we shall all be changed. But the ones who died in the life, we all gonna be changed to be the Lord and the man. But we all ain't gonna die. It says, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, 
for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. Our spirits go going to those heavenly bodies, those extra terrestrial bodies, man. Right? Second Corinthians 5, our bodies that's, that's in heaven, man. It says, for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So when we get beamed up out of this flesh, out of America or wherever, brothers and sisters, that we gonna be beamed up into immortality. And what's immortality? Let's look it up. Let's look it up. Quick Google definition. It says immortal, living forever, never dying or decaying. We ain't gonna never get old. Think about your Howard Shaw been gone two thousand some years. He died at thirty three, but been gone two thousand some years. But Edgers had a dream on your Howard Shaw in the end, crowning the elect, and he said, "What young man?" Young man is this that crown of them. You know, how was I go come back 2,000 some years later, still a young man? Come on, man. You see? Come on, man. But it says, verse 54, So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, this shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. <laughs> come on. It says, Death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death. Where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Right. It says, The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to the Most High, which giveth us the victory through our Lord, Yahweh Shah Mashiach, man. And that's how we're going to live forever. By the Lord, Yahweh Shah. What is saying? Um, what is saying? Uh, let me snag it real quick. Philippians 3 and 20. Yeah, Philippians 3 and 20. For our conversations is in heaven from whence we look for the Savior, the Lord Yahweh Shah Mashiach, who shall change our vile bodies that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. So our vile bodies will be changed like unto a glorious body, man. You feel me? Right? When we get beamed up into the Lord chariot. And we ain't gonna ever die from that point on, man. Like the brother, I was talking to the brother Yakano, and I came here like, I right, think about it. We're gonna live here, like, we're gonna live in a, a billion years later in our rulership. We still gonna be living here. Like, can you even picture after a billion years? You can't. That's the point. <laughs> we never had the opportunity to even think about living forever, like, truly living forever, man. You see? Come on, man. This is a beautiful thing. The water you have about Shima was shy, man. You see? And this is only for the Israelites. Because, hey, once when you get when we get beamed up, we go get beamed up, beamed up into the Lord Cherry. That's where Second Edges 2 take place, man. Right? But I ended off on this because this is us coming out of the cherries. Right? We go be on earth in whatever body you in now, beamed up, and your body go be changed as we just got put in. Your spirit will be put into a new body. Right? And we will be in your Hawashai cherries, singing a song of Moses, looking down on the destruction. And then after that, we're going to have to come out the cherries, man. And then after that, we about to prove right here when we come out the cherries, there's going to be no more death. This Revelation 21 and 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, right? The rulership of the Israelites, man. On earth. This after Esau, rulership get burnt up, according to 2 Peter 3. It says, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, Coming down from the most high out of heaven, prepared as a bride or dawn for her husband. Now, this is not talking about an actual city floating out of heaven coming to earth. Because remember, Yahweh Shai says the kingdom won't come by observation, low hill, low dell. He said the kingdom is within us. This truth, man. This truth is within us. You see? So what is John seeing coming down right here? He's seeing the elect of the nation of Israel coming down out the UFOs. Being fishers now turn into hunters, man. Come and take over the world. That's why it says the saints shall take the kingdom. Well, this going to be the elect men coming out the chariots about to take over the world, man. Set things in order. And to prove that, it says, and I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from the most high out of heaven. And also to prove that it's talking about Jerusalem. Remember in, uh, I think it's Matthew or John. When it says, oh no, it's in Luke. When it says the kingdom of heaven suffer violence, right? I think it's in Luke. So like your brothers correct me if I'm wrong. But it says the kingdom of heaven suffer violence, right? And the violent take about force. Well, we know where the most high, they ain't suffering violence up there. 
That was talking about the Israelites during the time of the Roman Empire. We were suffering violence under the Romans, man. Telling you the nation of Israel is the kingdom. We are the kingdom. So this is who John seen coming down from heaven in those new bodies. And it says, prepare as a bride adorned for her husband. Telling you it's not a city. Because remember, Yahweh he said he's married unto us, man. We are his bride, right? So this is talking about the elect. And it says, and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, behold, and our bodies are already changed at this point. Remember, going into the chariots, our bodies will be changed. We're going to get crowned on your Shai chariots and come down with our crowns and new bodies to take over the world. Then it says, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of the Most High is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. Telling you that New Jerusalem was the people. And they shall be his people, and the Most High himself shall be with them and be their power. It's the point. And the Most High shall wipe away from their eyes all tears and there shall be no more death. Let's read it again. And the Most High shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death. Picture that. You beam, you was beamed up alive, and you ain't gonna ever die again. Pe an Israelite, period, you ain't gonna ever die again because of the new bodies. But the point is, as an Israelite, we will live forever, man. It says, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall... There'll be any more pain for the former things are passed away, man. You see that? So we gonna live forever, bro. We gonna, we truly gonna live forever, man. You know, the point of this lesson was to go into the ones who was gonna be alive and remain and be beamed up and live forever. But at the end of the day, being an Israelite, hey, what advantage have the Jew, right? What advantage had an Israelite that we gonna live forever, man? New bodies, man. Come on. But with that, Lord willing, this lesson was that I found. I to give all praise and glory to Yahweh by Shemel Shai, by Shemel And with that, Shalom.